Let's bring it back home now where law enforcement officials through the National Joint Operational and Intelligence Structure are on standby amid threats of a national shutdown by truck drivers tomorrow. The strike is expected to disrupt major routes including the N3 between Johannesburg and Durban. The strike is said to be a protest against the employment of foreign nationals among other issues. Mary Paddy, President of the Truckers Association of South Africa, joins us now for this discussion. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to join us this afternoon, Ms. Paddy. Maybe tell us what is the big gripe against foreign nationals uh, on the roads driving the trucks that are delivering important goods across uh, the country? Look, you know, this matter has been going on for many years where South African um, unemployed and current truck drivers were raising a concern that uh, operators are hiring foreign truck drivers and that the issue of the, you know, task team had failed them. So those are the grievances. But, you know, more specific here is that we are, you know, their concern is that we are rotating in one place and there's no progress in everything that they are trying to tell us or trying to send a message to the government. What kind of conversations are you having with uh, logistics companies who you say are hiring these uh, uh, foreign nationals? Uh, some compromise that you could perhaps uh, uh, come to as opposed to uh, a shutdown, which would really impact economic activity on the day? Look, we are engaging um, uh, you know, um, operators in such a way that even those that do not belong to any association to say, let's find each other halfway because... Uh, the Minister uh, of uh, Home Affairs, uh, Minister Mtualedi, if he has made it very clear that uh, hiring a truck driver is not a scale skill, it means that all operators can hear us, you know, all over the media when we are calling to them to say hiring a, scale, um, a foreign truck drivers is illegal in South Africa. And therefore, there are processes that need to be followed for you to be able to prove that, you know, there is no skill and there is no person that can be able to do that work. So... Uh, we are engaging operators and we are talking to operators and we are telling the operators that, you know, they must not follow uh, uh, the processes that is outside the bargaining council regulation where it says um, uh, we need to make sure that we pay uh, uh, our employees the correct uh, salary scale of the heavy duty driver. So those are the things that we are talking to them about is that the government has put all the you know, regulations and policies in front of us. It's just a matter of implementing them. But parallel to that, there are things that are out of the, our hands that we cannot be able to control. Mm. I, I think it would be remiss for us to say that it's illegal to hire them uh, because as long as they do comply uh, with Section 45 of the Road uh, uh, Traffic Management Act, they are able to operate. So I just want to get clarity from you, uh, Ms. Paddy. Are you saying that no foreign officials should be hired by logistics companies to drive uh, their fleet? Uh, or are you saying there should be some form of middle ground that needs to come into play where there's a percentage, uh, something that should have been established by this task team that you spoke to us about, but clearly hasn't been done as yet? Look, there are documents that prove that, um, you know, if as long as we are hiring a person that is not on the list of the scare skill in South Africa, that's illegal because uh, you are hiring a person that does only have a passport that must be here for 24 months. You are hiring a person that does not have proper visa requirement. So we should be using the word illegal because if we say uh, to them they can accommodate, we are saying those that qualify as foreigners in South Africa uh, and those that do not qualify are the same. And in this case, it's not the same because it's another industry where you, could, you must emphasize the fact that hiring a, a person uh, that is not on the scale skill list as per the home affairs, that's illegal. So that component, yes, of course, in terms of the laws for scare skills, uh, we can agree on. Um, but what about the skills? Uh, we do know that there are lots of truck accidents that happen on our roads every day. Um, and a lot of the argument that come out when investigations are conducted is that the drivers are usually not skilled truck drivers. So what about that component of the argument? Are you indicating that it's uh, the foreign and national drivers that are the cause of uh, the accidents that we'd be seeing on our roads? The good news is that, you know, the point that you are raising now is on our 11-point plan of the task team meeting that we have signed last year uh, with the former Minister of Transport, Figile 
uh, uh, Minister Figile Mbalula, where uh, it is part of the point in that list. Uh, we have come out to say we need to make sure that we enhance the training of the, our heavy-duty truck drivers, not that they cannot drive, but for the mere fact that they can be able to, you know, survive most accidents in terms of defensive driving. So uh, if there, it is one of the points that is on the task team, and it is one of the points that is so crucial in such a way that the department, uh, uh, TITA, which is uh, 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 the, 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 the wing of, of the Department of Transport is saying that we need to come and do an application and TASA is calling for a, a college that will be saying to any person that has got a code 14, go to do this type of a training so that uh, whoever that wants to hire a truck driver must pull from that. Uh, we are not saying that they cannot drive, but we are saying that training them as part of the 11 point plan showed that it's a serious matter and it's a matter that we are looking at as an industry. Mm, it's a serious matter indeed, and a shutdown is, as I said earlier, quite detrimental to the economy. Uh, Ms. Paddy, as Tessa, are you able to give us some figures to uh, give us a sense of how many foreign nationals compared to uh, locals are hired uh, by uh, logistic companies at the moment? Uh, if you don't have the exact ones, it's fine. Just to give us a sense of the current landscape and what it is that you are looking to change from the protest. Maybe let's look at the background of where the strike started uh, when the um, uh, 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 truck drivers you know, raised a concern. At that time, the percentage was very high, but now it has dropped um, you know, significantly to about uh, less than 70%. So it means there's progress and there are uh, operators that are listening, but there is a bit, there's improvement and there are things that are happening. We don't have the bigger number compared to seven years ago where we were just hiring them based on the fact that anybody that knocks at the door must be hired. So there's a, there's a huge difference and most of people are now aware that uh, if you go to any African country, you wouldn't find a South African driver driving a truck of a... Um, uh, another country, but in South Africa, you find that even though they allow uh, South African drivers, uh, truck drivers, to be in their land, so uh, it, there's a huge change in operators, and the percentage is dropping significantly. And we are happy with the progress, the way we are doing it as operators now. Mm. What about if a foreign national, Miss Paddy, has a valid work permit? Uh, a lot of these truck drivers have been given until June uh, to get the documents or affairs in order. Is that not premise for them to have a job, whether it's in the trucking industry or anywhere else? Or are you saying no foreign national at all, legal or illegal, should be operating in the industry? Um, I think I'm, I'm on the point of saying, uh, what are the processes of hiring a scarce skilled driver? You know, I'm in that point. As, as soon as we answer that point, then we don't have to worry about whether they've got a good documentation or not, because uh, they can be here to do other jobs, you know, you know, you call security or they can work at the restaurant. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the point that in the freight industry, as long as that is not on the list, as per what uh, Minister Mzualedi has said, for me, a uh, specific is that we need to relook at this matter and make sure that we hire our own in South Africa because uh, the unemployment in South Africa is very high. It's getting uh, worse and worse, especially after the pandemic. And, and we need to make sure that we prepare ourselves because uh, tomorrow we cannot be saying that any South African driver cannot drive a, a big vehicle. So in heavy duty vehicle, we are, we are saying as TASA that uh, despite the fact that there's a possibility of hiring a, a, a foreign truck driver, uh, in South Africa, but you must look at the matter that the process is, uh, uh, is not correct. And hence, we have the task team now that is trying to correct that issue. Miss mm, Paddy, it may not be a scarce skill as you are premising your argument on as TASA, but there is a culture in South Africa, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but anecdotal evidence has indicated that some South Africans are just not happy with certain kind of jobs. And so those who are willing to take them are taking them up. Is that not a valid argument for you to look at to say, well, if South Africans are not willing to drive trucks, then we should be giving the jobs to those that are willing, uh, if they've got the right permits and the right documentation, not to exclude them from the economy entirely? Maybe let's look a little bit deeper on that. If you look at any driver's license of a person coming from another country working in South Africa, 
their licenses don't, don't expire. But if you look at the Code 14 of South Africa, the license expire after four years. Now, what are we saying? Are we saying that um, um, uh, when we are hiring a person that come, is coming from another country, are they complying with the laws of South Africa? No, that's not, because South Africa is saying that have a Code 14 after four years, and they are saying that you can have a license throughout. So it means there's something that is missing there, and therefore there's no um, a, a, a proper way of doing it. So it means that whatever that you are hiring, it means it's, it's not correct. We need to sit down and say, all the departments, be open up about your policies, how to resolve them. I think that we are basing on our comments on facts that, you know, we need to check as to what happens to South African Code 14 and what happens to a person that is bringing lessons into South Africa. Mm. And then just very briefly, if you will, Ms. Paddy, the immediate action that you would like to see after the uh, blockade that you are all, as plan are all planning as an industry, what is the immediate action that you'd like to see from government and related stakeholders? Look, we don't want to see the strike happening tomorrow. Uh, we don't want to see the strike and we are re appealing to the ATDF not to go on the street. Uh, one of the things is that we've signed the task team uh, document uh, linked to the fact that we'll, uh, you know, no more close uh, roads and whatever that is uh, hindering us, we must go around the table and engage because there are complicated things that might happen when we go on this strike. You know, I think we need to emphasize the fact that we don't want to see the strike happening. We want to talk to them. We want uh, them to come to us and say we have a problem of uh, installing or, uh, uh, the drive came inside the truck so that as operators we can be able to resolve it. So we would like to engage with them, talk to them, you know, uh, uh, have facts on the table and resolve any matter that you can resolve because this strike is going to create more uh, issues. Already mm. the industry is bleeding, it's going to be worse. Mm. Thank you very much for those insights. That is uh, Mary Paddy from the Truckers Association of South Africa. Uh, and one would say that the issues go beyond just it about being foreign nationals, uh, the lack of uh, labor inspectors, the oversight on companies hiring policy and doing so uh, in terms of hiring documented workers and the like. There are many issues, as she described there, and hopefully we don't see a strike tomorrow and all the parties come to the table to find some form of solution.